From the moment that there was absolutely no resistance at all and the Israelis had taken over the ship, there was a lag time of several hours uh, in which we had people who were bleeding to death, literally, um, who would be alive today if they could have been uh, medevaced out. And, and there were uh, many pleadings to have the Israelis uh, take these injured parties first, yet they refused to do so. And as a result, we did lose people who should be here today. The Israelis continue to say that they were very surprised and the, the way that they uh, thought that things would go was that they would come on board and there would be a sit down sort of protest and uh, this is what they expected. Yet from the very first moment that they arrived they were firing percussion grenades which are very loud explosions and if you were in a military person you wouldn't know if that was a real grenade that was throwing out shrapnel or simply a percussion grenade. Now a percussion grenade itself can kill a person if it explodes near you. They were also firing paintball rounds, yes that's true, but the art of lying is to tell a certain amount of truth but omit the actual uh, certain, the, the lies that are a part of your narrative. And the truth is that they had sniper rifles, they were firing live rounds, they were firing tear gas canisters and smoke bombs along with percussion grenades. So the whole picture makes it clear that they were attacking from the very beginning. They did not think that we were not going to resist. They did not think we were going to passively sit down. That's just a bald-faced lie. Israeli officials say that they have cases, at least four cases, in which weapons were used on our behalf. Now, when this is said, rather than Jane Corbin actually challenging them and asking for any of the evidence, no challenge is made, no evidence is provided, and we are expected to believe it simply because the Israelis say it. It would be the easiest thing in the world. I've seen all the pictures of the knives and the chainsaws and axes and things like that. Where's the pictures of the bullets or the weapons that they're talking about? And let us not forget, that the Israelis hold all of the video evidence that they weren't able to steal. The only video footage that got out was footage that was smuggled out, and very cleverly, I might add, because the vast majority of footage is still in the possession of the Israelis, and guaranteed there is footage of people being executed on that ship, which will never see the light of day because the criminal is the one guarding the evidence. Putting things in context and getting an accurate depiction of what actually happened on that night would require us to take a look at some of the sequence of events here. Within the first few minutes of the attack, the gentleman, the photographer, who was shot right square in the forehead, was a man who was pointing his camera at one of the helicopters which had a sniper on it, and that's how he was killed. Now, before I came into contact with any of the commandos myself, and many of my brothers and sisters on the ship had seen him lying there dead with that bullet wound, when we came into contact with the commandos, rather than treat those commandos as we had been treated, what we did was we disarmed them and we took them downstairs, we gave them medical attention, eventually they were released. Now you can imagine how if you saw one of your brothers who was being killed and the scores of people who were coming in with gunshot wounds, how you might feel. And a lot of us felt that way too, but at the end of the day, what did we do? We did the right thing and when we had an opportunity to do to them what they were doing to us, we did not do that. We did what was correct and right. We did what was re reflective of a humanitarian. We simply defended ourselves as any human being would in those circumstances. Uh, I was moving from one portion of the ship uh, up to the second deck, right below the top deck. And when I, uh, re when I made it up to the second deck, uh, one of the commandos had been pushed over the top deck and fell down right in front of me, three feet in front of me. The first thing I did was uh, identify the fact that he had a nine millimeter pistol. And immediately I went for that pistol, uh, unstrapped it and pulled it off of him while another brother grabbed him and took him inside. Um, I literally did not know what to do with that weapon. Uh, of course, I had every opportunity to use it and I knew I never wanted to use it. But I thought it was a very valuable evidence. And after a period of about five minutes trying to figure out where it was supposed to go, who I was supposed to give it to, I realized in the uh, melee and in the confusion that the best thing I could do was remove the bullets, which I did, and they were real bullets, and I gave those bullets to one of the, one of the uh, passengers on board and then I hid the weapon, again hoping that it could be used as evidence in a criminal trial at a later date.
Well, two days after I was released from Israel, a press release was issued in which five people were identified as terrorists, including myself. Specifically, I was named as a terrorist operative and I was, quote, traveling to Gaza to train a commando unit for Hamas. Now, it is pretty amazing that Israel would issue such a declaration when, in fact, I'm one of the people that disarmed two commandos, had those weapons uh, in my possession, the 9 millimeter weapon in my possession. And yet, as a terrorist, apparently, I uh, felt no inclination to end the life of the commandos that were murdering our people. This is the example of how the Israelis operate. It seems as if lying is, is automatic pilot. It's just what you do when the facts don't suit your case. And they have no problem at all lying. We should take nothing that Israel says as any kind of genuine statement. They have lost all integrity over years and years and years of propagating lies. And this is just a perfect example. And I'm simply uh, you know, one of the targets of their smear campaigns. The Israelis have been lying and committing murder for decades now, and largely the world has ignored it and let them get away with it. And thankfully, we've reached a point now where finally the world is paying attention and realizing that this uh, Zionist Israeli state is in fact the greatest threat in that region and, and probably the world with regard to the nuclear weapons it has. This state is out of control, and who knows what it's going to do next. And if it is not reined in it, if we do not use international law, then we only have ourselves to blame if we have a regional and perhaps nuclear war, a third world war, it is distinctly possible. And while Israel is allowed to operate with impunity, we are tempting that very reality. There's so much evidence that is uh, indictful of the Israelis. Among them, of course, is the uh, video footage, the reams of video footage that surely shows executions. Uh, but also, the Mavi Marmara has since been returned to Turkey. And the Israelis have done a good job of trying to cover their tracks. There are at least 250 uh, bullet marks or holes on the hull of that ship, and probably more from what I understand, but at least 250. A lot of them were uh, pasted and covered up with paint. And the reason why is because ballistics investigations, any legitimate ballistics investigations, will give you a lot of information as to what really happened. The angle of the bullet, the range, and things like this, which would show that there were bullets fired in areas in which there was no resistance and no evidence at all of any form of resistance, which would mean the Israelis were targeting people who were not involved in any kind of uh, defense. And that is, in fact, the truth. The BBC program uh, made many mistakes. One of them is that the Israeli commandos were not able to fire weapons while they were abseiling, as they say, in the program. Well, the Israelis weren't abseiling. Abseiling is when you link on to a rope with a clip, and then you have to release off of that when you get to your uh, bottom destination. They fast roped. You don't actually attach to the rope. So the idea also that the Israelis could not fire their weapons as they were coming down the rope is absolutely ridiculous. It's not expected that you would fire your weapon. That's what you have snipers for in the helicopters up above. And they're very fully capable of firing while the commandos are actually fast roping down. So this point is moot point. And again, it's just trying to skew the facts and make things unclear when they're not clear, when they're totally clear. There are at least three investigations going on. One is a, an Israeli investigation, which is pure fox guarding the hen house. Why would we expect anything from legi uh, legitimate from that? Uh, it would be foolish beyond, beyond foolish. There are also two UN inquiries. The UN Human Rights Commission has proved itself able in the past to actually issue um, accurate reports. The Goldstone Report would be uh, an example of that. The other UN report actually has uh, the former head of state of uh, Colombia, Uribe, this man is uh, so antagonistic to human rights, his uh, integrity cannot be uh, trusted at all. And uh, it is said that the Israelis are cooperating with that UN investigation. That's simply not true, unless the investigation itself is a complete farce, because in order for the Israelis to fully cooperate, all of the video footage that they've stolen would have to be handed over. But of course, the Israelis are not going to hand over not one bit of video footage that would run counter to their claims. So how can we call this investigation a valid investigation? And how can we say the Israelis were cooperating with it when they hold the evidence that would indict them?
There are so many abuses by the Israelis on this whole uh, experience that you would require a, a book to actually detail all of the individual cases. But one of the things that really stands out as well is that when the Israelis uh, boarded the ship and ultimately took control of the bridge, when they got onto the bridge, it just so happens that the chief engineer of the ship was, uh, was on the ship with his wife and they had their one-year-old baby with them. When the commandos came into the bridge, one of them pointed the gun at, uh, at the captain and told him to stop the ship. Uh, the captain refused. That commando then took the weapon and pointed it at a one-year-old baby that was being held in the arms of his mother and insisted, uh, commanded that the captain stop the ship. Now, you know, this is the kind of behavior of the Israelis. And if you think about it, they really do kind of define piracy. Jane Corbin goes to great lengths to try and create a question about who fired first. And what is absolutely absurd about this is that there is simply no evidence at all, none, that would indicate that we had any weapons and that we fired any weapons. Absolutely zero. And what is really proof positive that we didn't have weapons, or at least when we had those weapons, they came from the Israelis themselves. They did not come from us. And when we had them, we did not use them. Now to say that we had their weapons and wanted to use them, and yet not one Israeli was shot, even one time, is again an insult to our intelligence. I know for a fact, myself, as an ex-Marine, that with a 9mm pistol in my hand and an Israeli commando lying down on the ground before me, it would have been the easiest thing in the world if I were a killer to end his life right then and there. To think that the other people on board that ship who did take away the weapons of the Israelis did not have the capacity to kill those Israelis right then and there is again beyond an insult. It's a fabricated lie, it's an absolute joke, and it just shows how much the Israelis are willing to lie and destroy their integrity. The Israelis have made insinuations or accusations. In one case, they say there was a weapon that is not issued by the Israeli military in which they found uh, proof of that, yet they provided no proof of that. Uh, the program also ignores the fact that before we had departed from Turkey, Turkey was a staunch ally and business partner with the Israelis. Now, as we departed, before we departed, the Turkish authorities inspected those vessels and cleared them. So all that would have been required for Israel to have assurances that there were no weapons on board is simply talk to their ally, Turkey, and make sure that there were no weapons on board. And as it turns out, the proof is that where are the weapons that we would have had? Where is the evidence? Not one weapon beyond cooking knives and things like this has been provided as proof of anything. And in fact, there were no weapons. Axes that are used in the cases of fires, knives that are used for cooking, a decorative knife which has been used more and more and more to try and highlight some uh, ill intent. None of this can be considered a serious weapon. Uh, none of it can be uh, in any way delegitimized what we did, yet this is the best evidence that's offered to support the case. Being in the custody of the Israelis for the few days that we were, our treatment was actually quite good compared to Palestinians, and yet we were treated like dogs every step of the way. One of the things that really stands out, though, is the ability of the Israelis to lie incessantly over and over again. Whether it's lying about uh, being told that you can use the toilet in five minutes or that you will be able to call family members and let them know we're okay, or whether we'll get our personal property back uh, when we get to the airport, Virtually every single thing that they said to us was a lie, and, and the ease with which they did this really tells you a lot about the society as a whole, and tells you everything about the Israeli government.